Welcome back everyone. I am super excited about this particular video because it is about a topic that has had made a huge difference in my life. It is about a something that has really had just the most amazing profound impact on my life in the outdoors. And whenever I post a video on something that I really love, I've noticed a pattern and that is they get the least number of views. And I know I could probably be doing a video on my five pound summer base weights or three things every ultralight ba weight backpacker should not be carrying. But instead, we're going to do a big long video on hiking barefoot, backpacking barefoot, hiking in minimalist shoes, backpacking in minimalist shoes. And I have to put, tell you right up front what you're going to get in this video. Uh, it's going to be a long video. I know that because I just recorded it and I screwed up with something. I can, it was long enough where I considered just going home, but I'm going to try to stick it out and do it one more time. Uh, it's also just going to be a talking head video, you know, just me giving you some information. And I know when I've done that in the past, I've done some really long videos on like hydration and carbohydrates. People have left comments like, oh, I can't believe you didn't put any sources in your video. I just wasted all of my life watching your video. You're right. Um, there are no sources in this video. It is just me talking. And I'll tell you the reason for that. There's two reasons. One, I'm currently not living the life where I have a few hours to put in the research and then do the video. And also when I was doing the research a little bit here and there over the course of years, I did not know that I was going to have this massive YouTube empire. And so I was not accumulating my sources knowing that one day years later, I would be doing a video on why you should walk barefoot in the woods. So I apologize for not having the sources, but if you do have a question about something I'm going to say, go out and do the research. You are more likely to make a change if I could prompt a question in your head and you go out and seek the answer than if you just watch a video with a whole bunch of answers to questions you didn't even know you had. So see, I'm not including sources on purpose just to make you go out and do the work because then that will lead to you having the same positive impact in your life as it did in mine. Anyway, I want to first talk about a little bit about my story. Um, and I think it's important because when I was making the transition, uh, I didn't want to watch some 23 year old athlete talk about a pair of minimalist shoes that they were just given to them by some company. Uh, I didn't want to hear about why I should go minimalist and barefoot from somebody who had been barefoot all of their life. I wanted to kind of hear about it from someone like me. Um, someone who grew up in a very traditional sort of world. Uh, I was a big work boot wearing person. Um, nobody would ever go out barefoot in the woods. And the thought of wearing like a minimalist pair of sandals was just like, that was like totally alien or at least Californian to me. And so that's something that I would never consider. So part of my problem with making that transition was just getting comfortable not wearing those big bulky shoes and not feeling like I was a freak in the woods, just having it be normal. And so if I could do it, you could do it. Um, I also, I experienced 30 years of knee pain in my life. Uh, when I was 16, I went to the first time to the, the doctor, gave me a big old cortisone shot. Uh, thank you, Western medicine for not worrying about why my knee was hurting, but just let's get rid of the pain. Uh, all the doctors I went to after that pretty much did the same thing. Let's get rid of the pain. Let's not worry about why you have the pain. Uh, as I got older, the pain increased and increased and increased. It got to the point where I was no longer able to even run up to get my mail in my driveway. Otherwise, it would cause weeks of knee pain. It got to the point where my backpacking and hiking trips for like 10 years basically went to like zero because I, there was this trade-off. I knew that if I was going to go for a hike or a backpacking trip, I'm just talking about a weekend overnight, that it would be weeks of recovery because my knee would be in so much pain. So if I did go out with my kids, uh, I would make sure I picked like some nice flat little path that went through the woods and provided no challenges whatsoever. Otherwise, I'd have all of this pain. I did find one doctor, the freaky doctor, who nowadays we'd call him a naturopath, but back then, like he was the doctor of last, if every other doctor you went to didn't work, maybe then you'd go to this guy. He did diagnose my problem as bad feet. And he shot me up with all sorts of Novocaine, ripped my foot apart, 
That's right, foot Novocaine. Ripped my foot apart, and when he was done, I had these incredibly flexible feet, and he nailed it. He nailed what was causing my problem, and I came back home, and I had no pain for six months, first time in my life. It was incredible, and when I started getting pain again, and he said it would come back, it would take a couple times. When I tried to call him to make another appointment, he had died of some weird thing. And so that was it. And when I went to my next doctor, the big university dude down the road there, that is the sports medicine for all the sports teams, I told him the story about this doctor giving me foot Novocaine. And granted, maybe I shouldn't have led with the foot Novocaine. And, you know, tearing my foot apart, he just looked at me like I was a freak. And I think he's the guy that was like, let's start you on a steroid shot. And it's like, buddy, <laughs> what are you doing? And so I kind of gave up on doctors. And that is when, um, again, years after this whole series of doctors and pain, I just simply needed a pair of sneakers. And I ordered a pair of ultras. Now, I have big, huge, wide feet. Uh, I had found on a couple boards of the internet that a couple of different styles of ultra sneakers fit big, wide feet. I put the sneakers on, most comfortable pair of shoes that I'd ever worn in my life. There was a warning on the box that said, don't just you start using ultra sneakers all at once, slowly transition into them. Well, I'm a big, tough dude. I don't need any stinking transition. I wore them to work on Monday. I'm standing and moving for like 10 hours during the day. On Tuesday, when I woke up, couldn't move. My ankles, my feet, my calves were seized up. They were so sore. It was absolutely ridiculous. And it was that moment, and I'm glad that happened, that sent me down this road of researching. And this is back when Ultra was still selling like, you know, their 1.0s and maybe they were up to 2.0. So if you're familiar with Ultra, that was years ago when they first started. And it started me down this path of researching. And the first thing I started researching was just simply zero drop. And that led me to, of course, all the lies that shoe companies tell you. And that led me to learning about why being barefoot is so much better for you. So let me share some of that information with you. First off, shoe companies, yes, they are lying to you. Uh, yeah, they, they are, believe it or not. They're not telling you the truth. They are not interested in your health. Believe it or not, they are interested in making a profit. It's kind of like um, McDonald's. They are not actually interested in serving you the best meal, right? And there's a lot of things that we've been lied about that we just accept. We accept the fact that we have to buy fancy shampoo. We have to buy fancy toothpaste. We have to buy fancy deodorant. We have to buy big, you know, look at the size of cars in America that are just getting bigger and bigger with more and more junk in them. And so we kind of live in this world where people have convinced us that we need all of these things. And in the end, it's not really making our life better. It's just making someone a whole lot of money. And shoe companies fall into that category. Um, almost everything that a shoe company tries to sell you is worthless and actually will end up causing more damage to your body than if you just didn't wear them. And so, for example, um, let's just start off with the zero drop. So shoes, zero drop, first of all, is your heel is the same height above the ground as the ball of your foot. It's a zero drop. It is flat. It's not supposed to have a heel. Um, Nike is put heels in the shoes because when the running craze started and you had all these middle-class businessmen that decided to start jogging, they bought Nike shoes and they're developing all these problems down below. And so one of the guys from Nike decided to go down to this podiatrist's office in the building that they were working out of and said, hey, our people, our customers are getting these injuries and their Achilles and their ankles and all down calves. What's going on? Podiatrist basically said, you have all these businessmen that are in their shoes all day. And when you're up on a heel, it weakens your calf, weakens those muscles down there. So now all of a sudden when you go to a flat shoe and you start running, you're stressing out things that have not been stressed before. And so Nike was, the guy from Nike was like, well, what do we do? And the podiatrist was like, put a lift in your shoe. And heels and running shoes were born. And if you think about it, heel, let's just say you were standing up straight, right? And I put a board, just a little board, the size of a heel on your shoe, underneath your heels. You would come forward, right? But instead of falling over, you would compensate by leaning backwards. And so now all of a sudden your body is all discombobulated. 
and now you're taking every step, whether you're hiking or you're running or you're walking in the woods, and now every step your body is in this discombobulated sort of position. And so it doesn't help you at all. Also, when you have a heel in your shoe, because of what it does to your Achilles, it forces you to heel strike. So wear any, shoe, any kind of sneakers or shoes, hiking shoes with the heels, and go out for a walk, go out for just a quick you know, 50 foot run, and you're striking on your heel. And if you think about it, you reach out with your foot, right? Your heel strikes, and then you come up and over it. When your heel strikes, where does all that force go? Right up to your knee. That's not my knee. Right up to your knee. And that's what's receiving the brunt of, of all of that force when you're running and you're walking, when you're heel striking, heel striking, heel striking, heel striking. And that is part of the problem of any shoe that puts you up in a heel. And you might have a sore back, you might have other problems, but it's totally discombobulating how you are walking and, or running. The other problem uh, with shoes and the heels is that you have that big piece of foam padding at the bottom of your shoe, all that cushioning. And a lot of times when people are like, oh, I have sore knees, I have all of these other pains, I need to go and buy shoes that have cushioning in them. Well, that cushioning is just going to make it worse because your foot wants to receive intelligence from the earth. That's what it's made for. It wants to receive intelligence from the earth. You have all of these receptors on the bottom of your feet. You have two different types. In, in this part of your body, you have one type. So if I had a nail and I went like this, my arm would move away. On the bottom of your feet, there's all of these type of receptors and there's another type of receptor that works like two times faster than the ones that are on the rest of your body. And so you, those receptors wanna feel and get all sorts of intelligence from the ground. They wanna feel every pebble, every stick, every piece of everything. And when you don't have that ability to feel and you put that piece of foam and you put that cushioning, your, your, your body is still gonna push harder. So there's research and it's not like it's freaky research that's buried, every, every shoe company knows this, that if you put yourself in more cushioning, your body still then strikes harder because it's trying to get that intelligence. If you put less cushioning, your body strikes less. I mean, it's just, it just makes sense. And so the shoe companies are selling you all of that padding that's not helping you at all. And if you think about it in another way, I had to change a light bulb uh, in my, one of my, room, my bedroom. Uh, I don't know how long ago it was, but it's right above our mattress. It's in a ceiling fan. And so I just stood on the mattress and I felt like I was drunk. Like just stand on a cushy mattress, right? Like it's hard to just stand up straight and hard to like walk across a mattress because it's all squishy. Well, when you're in padding and shoes, what do you think you're doing? It's the same exact thing. You're stepping into this squishy environment and obviously you're not going like this because it's smaller, but your foot is still doing that much smaller movements all the time. The other thing that shoes are gonna to try to sell you is all sorts of support. And I know even on the Merrill Minimalist Shoes, if you go on the website, they brag about their supportive heel cup. And if you think about it, if you wanted to make your, your sorry, if you wanted to make your arm stronger, right? So let's say you wanna beef up your arm. Would you give it more support? Would you put it in a cast? So to get a stronger arm, let's say you wanna be a bodybuilder, you don't put your body into a cast to make it stronger. That, I mean, like everybody hearing that would be like, of course not. That would make you weaker. Well, why don't you think that way about your feet, right? If you put your foot into a foot cast or a shoe and give it all that support and give it all that help, how could it possibly become stronger? It would only become weaker. And that's what shoes that advertise all that extra support and all that extra stuff do, is that they're just gonna make your foot weaker. Like people are gonna say, well, I need arch support. Right? I, need, I'm, I have a high arch, I need arch support. Well, it's not about having a high arch or a low arch. It's about how strong your arch is. And in an arch in architecture, where's the weakest point of it? If you were gonna put pressure anywhere on the arch to collapse it, where would you put the pressure? right underneath it. 
You put pressure on an arch, it collapses. So think about your foot for a second. You have this arch in your foot, and what do shoes do? They put support right in the middle. And then, and I just, just had this conversation with someone who I know is not going to watch this video, so I'm okay sharing the story. Someone a couple of weeks ago about how they went barefoot for a day. It's kind of just accidental. They were just, they had the day off and they were around their house and they were going barefoot. And they said at the end of the day, their arch it hurt so much. So, I mean, that's, it's obvious that they need to wear shoes with arch support. And no, that's not obvious that you need arch support in your shoes. It might be obvious that you have a weak arch. And yes, there is 1% to 2% of the population in America that has some significant foot, I don't know what to call it, some you know physical problem with your foot that you might need something special. But for the other 98%, your problem is not probably some deformity in your arch, but it's probably just because you have a weak arch. Your shoes are also keeping your toes all perfectly even. Your toes are not meant to be perfectly even. Your toes are meant to bend and spread and feel and adjust to all of the different things that are going on. And talk about spreading. If you have shoes on right now, pop them off. Take your insole off. Take your insole out. Look at the shape of your insole. And then honestly tell me that the shape of the insole is the shape of your foot when you compare it. I guarantee you your foot probably doesn't go skinny to a point, like your shoe or like your insole. Your foot goes wide, right? And so what happens is your, your shoe is going to squeeze your toes. And I know before I made this transition, my toes were all together. My little toe was curled in, because again, I have big wide feet, so I was always in shoes that were too tight. And I didn't even know it. I just figured that's how shoes are supposed to fit. And my big toe was pushed in. And as the more and more and more I go barefoot over the course of years, they're slowly spreading out. It's freaky. Like I was actually sitting last night thinking about, oh, I'll make this video today. And I was on the couch and I looked at my feet and they're just like, when they're relaxed, they were just like spaces between the toes. It was the weirdest thing. That was not always there. Um, the other thing is that I lost track talking about my toes. See, I started talking about my toes, and I'm going to resist stopping here because I don't want to edit the video. Oh, man, I totally lost track thinking of my toes. Um, all right. So the other thing is, shoot. All right. I think I'm just going to skip it, and we'll just go on. Um if you're now, all right, let's, start, let's talk about the transition to going barefoot and going to minimalist footwear. And again, this is not going to be a big, long sort of like, here's exactly how you have to do it. I think there's plenty of other websites and books that do that. Um, if you are going to make the transition, you need to do it slowly. You don't even realize what kind of bad shape your foot and Achilles and calf and your ankles are in. It's crazy. Um, I mean, I don't know how long it's been for me, but it's what, three years? And even it's been three years and still my feet will get sore sometimes. Um, I was actually working outside the house yesterday and I was all bare feet. I was on my feet all day long. I was installing some doors. And at the end of the day, my feet were sore. And it, was, it still shocked me that even after all of these years that it's still a little bit sore. Uh, I know there is one book that recommends that you don't even go for more than a mile until the 12th week of working up to it. And so it takes 12 weeks of slowly working up before you actually even go one mile for a one mile barefoot hike. Uh, and so you do need to make the transition slowly because all of those receptors that are on the bottom of your feet, they've gone to sleep hanging out in your shoe cast. So those all need to get resensitized. Resensitized, there's a word for you. The other thing that's going to happen, two things, is that your skin is gonna slowly get thicker. It's not just all of a sudden gonna be ready to be pounding, going outside on the trails. And your body is gonna to start to deposit more fat under your foot. And those fatty deposits should be there, but because they just are never used, your foot's kind of gotten rid of them. 
And what you're gonna find is that when you go outside for the first time, at first it's gonna seem like everything hurts because for the first time in a long time, you're probably suddenly gonna be just like overstimulated. You're gonna feel every leaf, you're gonna feel the dirt, the mud, the wetness, the blades of the grass. All of this information is coming into your brain for the first time and all of your receptors are starting to get activated again. And it's gonna be an amazing, amazing thing. And what you may need to make sure that you don't do is as amazing as it's gonna feel, cut your walk or your hike short. Don't just keep going and going and going. Really and truly take it slow and just little bits at a time. The other thing that you have to do to make the transition is you're going to be walking differently. And I think the very best way to figure this out is right now, go outside to your driveway, your sidewalk. Don't go out to your plush, irrigated lawn. Leave that for another day. Somewhere on a hard surface. Take your shoes and socks off and just run for 50 feet. You're gonna notice something that you've never noticed before, and that is that you are gonna stop heel striking. And when you, again, when you're in a heel, it automatically weakens your Achilles and puts yourself in a position where you reach out and you heel strike. When you don't have your shoes on and socks on, a couple things might happen. First is you might start heel striking, but then immediately your body is like, whoa, this is stupid. And then it shifts and you start landing more on your forefeet, or you might be doing that immediately. And that motion is gonna be brand new to you. You haven't run like that since you were like three. And so pay attention to that motion. And the best way I've heard it described is to think about it like pedaling on a bicycle. You're not stretching your feet out. They're underneath you, you know, one after another in a quick cadence. And I know whenever I'm out and I need to kind of reset myself, I think of that like I'm pedaling on a bicycle, small steps underneath me. And if I look down, I should not be able to see my foot hitting the ground, right? Because if I can see my foot hitting the ground, that means I'm landing I'm not landing under my body and I am heel striking. And so I wanna make sure that my feet are landing underneath my body so that my knees are using, I'm using my legs as those shock absorbers and it's not that jolting motion. I can tell you every single time I go hiking or backpacking, when I try to make up some miles, those are the trips I come home and I have sore knees. Because when I try to make up the miles, I lose my cadence and I start over striding and it happens every single time. So shorter strides like a bicycle, but go for a very short run in your driveway or your sidewalk or the parking lot of wherever you happen to live and make sure that you do that. That is, I think, absolutely, if you're gonna do anything else, make sure you go and do that. Um, other things about going barefoot. I think it probably helps if you've been in shoes all of your life to go on a nice day because some people don't like squishing in the mud and maybe it takes you a while to squish up to the mud or it is awesome going in the rain, barefoot, hiking, because you have no wet shoes or socks. I can tell you it is awesome. Um, or if you're wearing something minimalist like sandals because there's no sogginess at the end of the day. You, even like if you hit a river, you can walk right through the river to cool your feet off and just keep going where everyone else is dancing around the rocks. And so when you do start off, again, you know, if you're not someone who likes that wet feeling, just go when it's nice and dry. If you're someone who is into like any kind of weather conditions, go when it's raining because it'll be so cool that it'll just make you want to do it more and more and more. And if you are not ready to go barefoot, if you're not ready to make that transition, then the next logical thing would just be to use a minimalist shoe, which I have on me. Um, the videos coming up after this are gonna be on minimalist shoes. Uh, I'm gonna do a review, a more extensive review of this one, and then some minimalist sandals. And so if you are gonna start looking for a minimalist shoe, uh, there's a few things that you wanna look for that, and again, it's not barefoot. And I think especially it's a, I think it's really important that if you're going to go into a minimalist shoe to at least include, if you're not going to go barefoot hiking, just go barefoot in the woods for a little while because it'll just reset how you walk 
and then put your minimalist shoes on and walk the same way. Because the problem that I found is that when I just threw on my minimalist shoes, automatically like something kicked in and I just like, my body was like, all right, you got shoes on your feet, go crazy. And I was heel striking again and I was bringing back the knee pain. And so it helps to reset my body by going barefoot. And so at least go barefoot for a little while, notice how you walk, then throw the shoes on and walk the same way. Now, if you're looking for a good pair of minimalist shoes, there are quite a few brands that are out there right now. Um, this is a cheaper one called, uh, called Witten. And when you're looking for a minimalist shoe, you don't want any support. Remember, you're not putting your, sh your foot into a cast. So notice there's no support in this shoe. This shoe could be bent in all different directions. There's just the heel, there's no heel cup or anything like that. It's basically just a piece of rubber with some fabric. And you want your foot to do all of the work because that's what it's made to do. And again, when you're wearing the rubber, all those receptors aren't working at like they're supposed to, but you can still feel stuff through these soles that you'd never feel in a regular uh, hiking shoe. Uh, the next thing you're going to look for is no cushioning. Uh, I even took out the inner sole of this shoe because uh, I didn't want the cushioning. I also didn't want the arch support. And so when I'm stepping on this yellow part right here, that is straight onto the ground uh, or straight onto that rubber right there. There is no difference between the two. And the other thing you want to look for is if you notice, this is, I can get that in the camera, it's like flat, even though it looks a little bit curved. It's pretty much flat straight across. So running shoes and hiking shoes often, you're going to find it has a curl to the front. All right, that little bit of a, a toe curl, because again, they know that you're going to be striking on your heel and then rolling up your toe. And think about it. If you're standing barefoot, your toes aren't curled up. Well, hopefully they're not curled up. And so you don't want that in your shoe. So they're totally flat. Um, the next thing is it has a nice wide toe box and these shoes are pretty wide through the whole thing so the, the toe box is not so obvious as being wide um, but you want something that's the shape of your shoe so take the insole out of your shoe and look at your foot and ask yourself is your foot the same shape as that inner sole no that inner sole goes to a point your feet don't go to a point hopefully and so you want an inner sole and a shoe that is the shape of your foot, not some shape that they want it to be. And I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I know that my toes were squished together and the little toe and big toe were kind of like curled in because that's the shape of most shoes, not wide. So you, you want a shoe where your feet can spread out in it. And obvi you know, obvious things like you want a shoe that is nice and light and that breathes for you. Uh, that that's easily that breathes. So uh, I'll be doing a next video is a big review on this one and then some sandals coming up. And if I could leave you with one last thing, uh, this one's a little bit out there, but I'm going to go with it anyway. I think one of the biggest benefits of going barefoot is something called grounding. Now that might be a term that people usually have either heard of it or never heard of it. And so this is not going to be a big extent extensive uh, explanation of it. You can go out and seek answers on your own, but here's a little bit about grounding. So when the sun is, ra sun's rays are coming down to the earth, they're of course wicked powerful. And you have these super powerful x-rays, ultraviolet light coming down, and it's so powerful that it just like poof, smashes up the molecules up in the atmosphere, it ionizes them, and it breaks off the electrons, and they're all floating around in this part of the atmosphere called the ionosphere. So like 40 to like, 600 miles up, hope I didn't get that wrong, is this area of the atmosphere that's all ionized with all these electrons. And then they kind of collect and they come back down to the earth through these huge lightning bolts, a little bit more complicated than that. And they charge up the earth that you're standing on with this negative charge. So the earth is basically like this huge battery. It's positive in the middle, it's negative on the outside, even though you will see that the earth on its whole is neutral not where you're standing is not neutral it's actually different between the core and the exterior and so your the ground is all negatively charged now if you have to ground your tv your electrical tv your body is nothing more than electricity and chemicals so why wouldn't you have to ground it and in our world where we walk around on our rubber rubber 
shoes. We walk around in our houses above the ground, in our cars that are on rubber shoes. And we walk around with all of these electronics and all these electrical fields that leads to our body becoming unbalanced. And so the theory is that when you stand on the ground, you absorb those electrons that were broken off by the sun and you rebalance your body. And there's a couple of simple kind of hokey documentaries out there on grounding. There's some initial research that's being done by what Western society would call more legitimate um, institutions and showing the benefit of grounding. And I think that is a very valuable thing, even if it is just placebo. You know, when you walk outside, you are touching the ground. Generally, people don't come back more anxious. They come back more relaxed. And some of the research is showing that it could have a big impact, not on just your state of mind, but also on your well-being and help with chronic inflammation and other things. So, grounding. Check it out. So, hopefully I've convinced you to at least believe that your shoe company is lying to you, that maybe you should ditch your shoes, maybe at least transition to a minimalist shoe. Maybe if you're not even going to go hiking, to just wear them in your regular life. Those shoes that I showed you right here, these were my work shoes last year. I wore these to work every single day. Um, maybe I've convinced you to go out into the woods and try some barefoot hiking. I will be honest, I have never barefoot backpacked yet. Um, I think what I'm going to do though later in the summer is go barefoot backpacking, but bring my shoes with me because there are, there's always around where I live, certain parts of the trail that the granite, little pieces of granite is just so, so sharp that I cannot do that yet barefoot. Um, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If there's enough questions, I'll just do one video with the questions, but, uh, I'm thinking I'd be pretty lucky if anyone has made it all the way to this point in the video. And if you have... Make the jump, make the transition, give it a shot. Thank you.